The Bailey Holt Memorial Nursing Scholarship Fund received two large donations Thursday during a check presentation at Murray State University. Joe Jackson reports. Bailey was one of two students killed in the Marshall County High School shooting on January 23rd. Bailey's family donated $3,300 raised at Bailey's 16th birthday celebration on May 15th. Paducah Bank donated another $2,500. The scholarship, set up by MSU School of Nursing and Health Professions and the Kentucky Nurses Association, will benefit Marshall County High School graduates that are enrolled in MSU's nursing program or transferring into the program from a community college. Bailey's mom, Secret Holt, says it makes her happy to know that her daughter's memory will live on. And I know Bailey would be so honored. It was her dream to be a labor and delivery nurse and just to carry on her legacy through so many students means so much. Kentucky Nurses Association Local Chapter President Nancy Armstrong said the scholarship fund currently has about $8,500 in it. She said the scholarship will be endowed if it grows to $25,000 over the next five years. You can donate at murraystate.edu slash giving. Make sure to notate Bailey's first and last name in the comments. I'm Joe Jackson. Imagine winning a car just for being a good student. Joe Jackson reports. For the second year in a row, C Motors gave away a car to a high school student. Students at Mayfield and Graves County are eligible to win the car, but they have to meet certain criteria. They must have perfect attendance throughout the school year, be on time, and have no disciplinary issues. A drawing was held last week to narrow the field to five Mayfield students and five Graves County students. Thursday, those students assembled at C Motors as their names were put in envelopes, and those envelopes were taped to the car. One by one, the envelopes were removed from the car until there were only two left, and then the winner was announced. You just won yourself a car. <laughs> the winner of the 2016 Ford Escape was Cameron Jones, a 16-year-old student at Mayfield High School. I'm actually surprised. I didn't think I was win because I don't really have that much good luck. Jones had a choice of taking the car or a check for $13,000, and he chose the car. He also received a $50 gift card, as did the other nine finalists. Larry Josie, owner of C-Motors, says he likes getting involved with both school systems and he thinks the promotion teaches a good lesson. I truly believe that wherever work, school, whatever, if you're there every day, if you're on time, you're not a distraction. The criteria that it takes to, to get in this, if you meet that in school and if you meet that after you get out of school in your jobs, it, it, you're going to be successful at some level. By the way, Cameron takes his permit test next week. I'm Joe Jackson. The search continues in Graves County for a missing Murray woman. Joe Jackson reports. 25-year-old Samantha Sperry and 30-year-old Wren Hendrickson of Simpsonia were reported missing late last week. The Graves County Sheriff's Office at Hendrickson's vehicle was found abandoned Thursday on Dooms Chapel Road south of Simpsonia. Hendrickson walked up to a home on Tim Road near Kaler Sunday night. According to deputies, Hendrickson was dehydrated and suffering from hypothermia. He was transported to a local hospital for treatment of his injuries. Speary was reportedly with Hendrickson at the time of his disappearance, but was not with him when he was located Sunday night. Graves County Sheriff Dwayne Redmond says Speary was last seen in the Kaler Bottoms area. We brought in several dogs to search the area. We've got, uh, I think, I don't know, at least one or two boats out there, several ATVs, several personnel out there searching the general area for we think she was last at to see if we can come up with anything. Redmond says the Kaler bottoms are flooded, making the search difficult. Redmond wouldn't say if he suspected foul play in Sperry's disappearance, but he said his office has her listed as endangered. You can see a photo of Sperry at our news website, West Kentucky Star. Anyone with information on her whereabouts should contact their local law enforcement agency. I'm Joe Jackson. A couple of local youngsters will make their national TV debut Thursday night. Joe Jackson reports. Brothers Cash and Cutter Singleton from Crittenden County are set to appear on NBC's Little Big Shots, hosted by comedian Steve Harvey Thursday night. Cash, age 8, and Cutter, age 11, are part of the bluegrass band Classy and Grassy. The well-known musical duo has performed both locally and at venues in other states for several years now. They said the show's producers discovered them on YouTube, and the next thing they knew, they were on a flight to Hollywood to start filming. They really called us, did a FaceTime interview, and uh, talked to Cash a little bit, and uh, flew us out the next Monday. The Singleton boys said they had a blast during their seven-day stay, although they lamented having to wear skinny jeans during their performance. 
and they're hoping the TV exposure will lead to an opportunity to perform at their two favorite venues. Grand Ole Opry. Or the Ryman Auditorium. You can catch the Singleton's performance at 7 p.m. Thursday on NBC. I'm Joe Jackson. It appears Marshall County's Zion Harmon will not be on the court when the Marshals open the season Tuesday night at Muhlenberg County. Joe Jackson reports. According to Marshall County School Superintendent Trent Lovett, the Kentucky High School Athletic Association has upheld an earlier decision ruling Harmon ineligible for the 2018-2019 season. The KHSAA initially ruled Harmon ineligible in August. Harmon's dad, Mike, told the Louisville Courier-Journal that his son was initially ruled ineligible because of the KHSAA's Bylaw 6, which states all varsity athletes must sit out one year after transferring. The bylaw provides plenty of exceptions, the most common being a bona fide change of residence in which the athlete moves or a divorce by the athlete's parents that leads to a change in residence. Bylaw 6 also states that the KHSAA may still require an athlete to sit out a year if the change in schools is motivated in whole or part by a desire to participate in athletics at the new school. The Harmons appealed the ruling, but the hearing officer recommended that the decision be upheld. KHSAA Commissioner Julian Tackett this week upheld that decision. Lovett said the next step in the appeals process is getting the case before a judge, but he said that decision can only be made by the Harmon family. Lovett said the Harmon family has the option of getting a lawyer and having the case heard in Marshall Circuit Court. If a judge were to rule in their favor, Harmon would be immediately eligible. However, Lovett says the KHSAA could appeal that ruling. Marshall County is the fourth stop in four years for Harmon. He played at Antioch Lighthouse Christian as a seventh grader, Bowling Green as an eighth grader, where he won a state title, and Adair County as a freshman. He enrolled at MCHS earlier this summer. The 5'10 sophomore guard and five-star recruit currently has offers to play college basketball at several big-time schools. I'm Joe Jackson. A massive explosion on a boat in Calvert City. Joe Jackson is live at the scene and has all the details. Marshall County Sheriff Kevin Byers says multiple agencies are on scene at First Marine Dry Dock Boat and Barge Repair. Responders working there to contain the fire on the vessel and rescue people trapped inside. Several injuries have been reported and unconfirmed reports from the scene indicate that at least two people have died. All of the Calvert City plants are suspending normal operations and sending personnel to assist in the operation. Fire boats have been called in from local fire departments. The Coast Guard has also been called in to the scene for a water search. Landing zones for helicopters are being established at the site, and the first of several requested have already arrived. Preliminary reports are that an exploding boiler on the boat or barge is suspected. Drivers in Calvert City are asked to avoid Industrial Parkway, while emergency vehicles need to travel in and out of that area. More information will be shared on this developing story as it becomes available. I'm Joe Jackson.